What's the haps? I'm Maroka, and today I want to talk a little bit about Rise of Knights. Rise of Knights, if you're not already familiar with it, is an upcoming mobile game based on the Spiral Knights IP by Three Rings and Sega. You could quite comfortably have missed any announcement of it because there wasn't really much of an announcement of it. Sega have put out a 15 minute, not really trailer, just sort of gameplay footage showing the early story, the early mechanics of it, and Three Rings have kind of made no mention of it. The only reason anybody was kind of aware of it is it's been discussed on the Spiral Knights forums and the admins have weighed in a little bit on it, but there's nothing on the Spiral Knights website to say, hey, look, there's this thing, it ties into this game that you're already familiar with, it's relevant, because they haven't done that. So right now, the game is not finished. There's an incomplete version, kind of an early access preview kind of thing. I'm not sure quite exactly what the deal is on mobile with regards to that kind of terminology. But either way, there is, as far as I'm aware, the 0.7 version is available only in Canada at the moment for some reason and only available on iOS. I believe the plan is later to bring it, well, first and foremost worldwide would probably be a pretty good start and additionally to Android. And I'll probably take a look at it when it does, because it's going to be a free-to-play kind of affair. So what is it you might be asking? It's a lane defense game, which uh, obviously Plants vs. Zombies is kind of the founding father of that genre, I suppose, really. It's been described as a clone of Chain Chronicle, which is not really a game I'm familiar with, but mechanically it does seem very, very similar. The, the basic principle is you get three, three lanes with waves of enemies coming down them, and you will take and place, in this instance, you, your knights. You'll take the knights, you'll place them in the lanes, and they will either shoot their guns or swing their swords, and ultimately defeat the enemies coming at them, hopefully. So the first thing I really want to touch on is basically kind of the narrative, the story of the game. Obviously, we've only got the first 15 minutes of gameplay footage actually available, so the, the footage available basically starts right at the beginning of the game and just plays through to about the 15 minute mark. So you get some of the early mechanics, you get introduced to some of the basically tutorial stuff. We're introduced to the early story, which is kind of the important bit. Kind of It kind of sets up the world and we get to see how it would tie in with Spiral Knights. I mean, admittedly, the name Rise of Knights kind of implies kind of a prequel kind of deal I would have said but at the same time a lot of what we learn kind of almost I feel maybe sets it far later maybe in a fair distant future after the events of Spiral Knights basically what we've got is that the world has been shattered by a great cataclysm of unknown origin this the, the, the facts behind this matter are unknown this is before our time but we live here this is our home which kind of doesn't tie in with Spiral Knights either Either it's a different world, or the knights have been here so, so long on this world that they have called it home, and they have long since given up any hope of ever getting off the planet. Obviously, the events of Spiral Knights, we're still kind of working on trying to get a power source to get the Skylark up and running, and hopefully get away here, because we just crashed here temporarily. We've been here four years now, but hey, yeah, we're still trying to get off this planet. We're still hoping to find a way home to our, our actual home. But within the events of Rise of Knights, the knights are now actually calling this planet home. They, they live here. Here. This is our world. It has been shattered by a cataclysm, but we live here. So the only thing that would really make sense for me there is if it is set in a fairly distant future after the events of Spiral Knights. In addition to that, uh, one of the weird lore things is just basically there's a change in the currency. Is that where the where the coins are called crowns in Spiral Knights? They literally just call them coins now. They look exactly the same. They still have a crown icon on them, but they just call them coins which is just kind of weird. I don't know why you would do that, to be honest. Additionally, a lot of the enemies kind of seem to be kind of inconsistent with kind of the established canon. Basically, you've got a lot of the mini enemies. You've got the tiny, tiny little glop drops, I guess, and some of the other, the dust bunnies. Basically, they, they are now like huge boss characters, which... I, I don't get why Three Rings would kind of make that choice. That almost makes me feel like it was a different development team that was working on it who weren't familiar with the canon, but there are no other development teams kind of credited with this. If you watch the footage, the two names that come upon it are Three Rings and Sega. So, as far as we're aware, this is Three Rings doing, but kind of the change to canon is just a little bit strange. One would have thought that, you know, if you're going to have a jelly boss throw some, like, a Toxilago at them, at your characters or something, don't throw a glop drop and then say, yes, this is a massive boss that requires a huge team of enemies to take out, because that's not what's been established within the game and the world already. I suppose if we're appealing to a new audience on mobile, that's not necessarily an issue, but if you're kind of trying to tie it in with the IP, it would be nice for some consistency, I would have thought. 
Something else that's worth addressing, I think, is potentially what the impact of the development of this game would be on the development of Spiral Knights. Again, there's very little evidence to the contrary that any other development team is working on this game. One kind of has to assume that Three Rings are the team working on this. And as we know full well, Three Rings are not a very large team, so if they're working on an entirely separate project, chances are that the majority of the team are working on a separate project. The team are now not going to be working on Spiral Knights, one would have thought. So where over the last three, six months or so, we've seen occasional chunks of content with kind of cliffhangers, and the promises of more content to come. Now there's kind of a concern there that potentially that kind of content is going to slow down, if not stop, just on the basis that, well, the team that would normally be producing that content is going to be working elsewhere. Now, Eurydice on the forums, the community manager kind of did post to kind of assuage concerns to the contrary, saying, oh, no, don't worry, Spiral Knight's always going to be here. Yeah, well, first and foremost, you know, that's her job as a community manager, is literally to say to a community if they have any issues, any concerns, that don't worry, everything's okay, we've got everything in hand. That's her job. And additionally to that, you know, the, the, the statement that it's always going to be there, well, yeah, it's an MMO. They don't have to keep developing it, they just have to keep hosting the servers. They're not they're not necessarily promising any commitment to developing it, they're just promising that they're not going to take the servers offline with a statement like that. There's no real, hey, don't worry, we're going to keep the content coming. That's not what has been said. So that in and of itself is just a little bit of a concern for me. A few players who do have access to the game have posted a little bit of information on what kind of the content that's within the game on the forums, so got a little bit of feedback there. Glacies posted that the areas contained within the games, you've got Area 1 is the Sky Isles, Area 2 is kind of a water area. Okay, that's an interesting and new kind of zone. Area 3, you've kind of got a frozen tundra, 4 is a desert, 5 is a mountain top, and 6 is the shroud area. So you got what would sound like some new content there, and it certainly seems like a lot of people are kind of optimistic that that might then cross over into the world of Spiral Knights, that we might see some of that content. Now, I'm kind of not, you know, optimistic that that would be the case. You've got to bear in mind with these things that there's a reason the mobile market is as saturated as it is. The development time and budget is much, much lower for developing a mobile title. With a small team like Three Rings, it's much easier for them to put out an entire mobile title than it would be to develop what what people are basically asking for is an expansion to an MMO. An expansion to an MMO is a huge undertaking, whereas putting out a mobile title, particularly one with mechanics that have already been established in another game elsewhere because they're not original mechanics, all it's basically doing is taking the mechanics of another game that exists and basically recreating that and then asking the art team to provide a new coat of paint on it, basically. That's a lot easier for a small team to do. So then to say, hey, this was successful, now can we take this content and port that to the MMO? Probably not. Probably not. Not really. Now, the, the hope is also that one could convert new players from Rise of Knights to Spiral Knights, that players playing Rise of Knights might be like, hey, this is really interesting, I'm intrigued to know more about this world, and then Three Rings might put some links in there that say, hey, if you like this world, maybe you should go check out our MMO, Spiral Knights, it could drive players that way, and then maybe if the game is really successful, it could provide some budget to work on Spiral Knights? That's kind of, I suppose, the most optimistic outlook of it. That's what I think a few people are hoping would be the case. Uh, I'm sorry I'm being really pessimistic about this, but if you think about the way these things kind of work, if you look at mobile titles, if it's making a lot of money, I don't think a business is likely to take a lot of money from a successful product and pour it into what is currently a far less successful product. Spiral Knights is clearly successful enough that it's managing to sustain you know, viability four years on. It's, I mean, if it was, wasn't was successful, it would have been taken down long ago, but it's not huge. It's not World of Warcraft. It's not Final Fantasy XIV. It's not Guild Wars 2. It's not a huge MMO. It's not massively successful. And even if Rise of Knights is successful, I can't really see either Sega or Three Rings being terribly inclined to take money from their successful product and use it to try and prop up a floundering MMO four years into its life cycle. So with that in mind, I feel it's worth addressing the business side of things as well. I mean, is this likely to be a successful product? Is this a, is this a worthwhile idea? Is it a good idea to be making this game? I mean, as I've already stated, this game essentially appears to be a clone of an existing title. The Chain Chronicle already exists, and it's actually quite successful. It has. If you go onto the Android page, they list the install base of any given application. It gives you a ballpark figure of how many people have installed it. 
On Android alone, Chain Chronicle has got between 1 and 5 million people have installed the game. On iOS, one could probably comfortably imagine something similar. I think I think the market share of Android and iOS is roughly equal, if memory serves. So I don't think it would be unreasonable to assume that there's probably be somewhere between 1 and 5 million installs on iOS as well. That seems entirely reasonable. So you've got a potential player base of somewhere between 2 and 10 million players, which is a good amount of players when you consider that, you know, Spiral Knights has a concurrent player base of, well, about 500. So, a bit of a difference there, a bit of a difference. That's obviously not the total player base of Spiral Knights, just the concurrent player base. If you log on to Spiral Knights at any given time, the average number of players will be somewhere in the region of 500. Those statistics are basically Steam figures alone, so maybe the real figure's a little bit higher than that, but I suspect it's probably not a lot higher than that. I would imagine quite a lot of the player base of Spiral Knights, it's quite likely to be, you know, basically Steam, because, well, Steam is the monopoly on video gaming, really, on the PC markets, if we're honest. To put that 1 to 5 million figure into some sort of context, that's the same number of players who have installed Final Fantasy Record Keeper on Android. That's Final Fantasy! That's a huge IP! And Chain Chronicle is kind of in the same ballpark of it. Now, one could look at that and say, hey, there's a lot of players who are interested in this genre of game, maybe we can get some of them. But at the same time, I would be inclined to say, yes, those players are already playing Chain Chronicle, somewhere between 1 and 5 million of them. The same fan bases who enjoy Final Fantasy on mobile are playing this game already. They probably already have their established game, they have their established progress, they've got their established world. They're not going to jump ship to another game just because it comes along and is in an IP that they're not really familiar with because it's kind of an obscure MMO that only has 500 players. And this is the big problem with the mobile market, really. It's so super, super saturated. There are thousands, thousands of clones or knockoffs of other games, much more successful games, entering the market all day, every day. There are any game that appears on mobile, if it's any way original or unique, it will be cloned many, many times before the week is up. Mobile success very, very much demands either innovation or a huge marketing budget. Ideally both. I mean, it's not enough to just knock off something like Game of War. Game of War is not really successful by its innovation or originality by most accounts. It's a fairly mediocre game. What it does have going for it is they have thrown gratuitous amounts of money at it so that everybody knows that it exists and people play it that way. They have adverts on TV. That's the kind of scale that makes a game successful on mobile. In many times, even if you are innovative, that is not enough. Look at a game like Threes. Threes was hugely innovative. There was nothing like it before. However, mechanically, it was very simple. And simple games are really, really easy to clone. If you can clone it, people will. People will steal your idea and take it and reskin it. And if they've got more money than you, they'll do a better job. Now, obviously, Sega do have some money. Whether they're going to throw enough money at Rise of Knights to make it bigger than Chain Chronicle, who knows, but my suspicion is probably that they won't. They're not going to be throwing Game of War kinds of money at this title, they're just, they're really not. For what it's worth, the one genre I have seen on mobile that doesn't get ripped off immediately, that doesn't end up with clones taking its market share, is narrative stuff. Whilst it's trivial, trivial to to clone mobile mechanics, usually because they're so very, very simple. It's much, much harder to rip off a really deep, interesting, complex story. Games by Tin Man Games, the Adventure Game Book series, and Inkle, yes, they're kind of choose-your-own-adventure narrative things, but guess what? They're allowed to succeed or fail on their own merits. The moment they're published, you don't, a week later, see somebody doing basically the same game, but with a different coat of paint and a different name. That doesn't happen, because to do that, you, are, you would essentially have to take the entire book. You're basically taking a book and changing it. That's why that can't work. That's why that's different. So, with that in mind, you know what, I honestly wouldn't mind seeing a totally narrative-based thing, get some writers to put together a really interesting Spiral Knights world narrative thing, and create an interesting narrative experience. That would be innovative. Whether that would be what Spiral Knights needs, I don't know. All, all, all I'm saying is that's kind of something I would quite like to see. So that's mostly my thoughts on Rise of Knights. Do I think it's going to be successful? Yeah. 
Probably. It's probably got the potential to be successful. I think if Sega have any kind of marketing budget in mind for it, it will do moderately well. I think it will make some money. I think it will keep three rings around and making games for a while longer. I don't think it's going to... it's not, not going to hurt the team in any way to have. But is it going to be the saving grace that we so sorely want for our beloved MMO? I'm not convinced that it will be. I don't think it's going to be what people want it to be. I think that's a shame, but I wish Three Rings the best of luck with that. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Rise of Knights. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. I'm absolutely always interested to know what other people have to say on the matter. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Maroka, and I will see you next time.